Hey everyone, I'm back in Van Nuys again walking to the Tesla Service Center to pick up the Model 3. And I've been thinking about something that I said while recording my previous service update video, which is that I had hoped that this service will go so well that I don't even make a video about it. Thinking about that made me realize that well, my entire service update series um, might seem negative to some people. And I haven't been focusing on the negative, I've actually just been relaying basically my entire service history with Tesla, so I haven't skipped anything. But it occurred to me that I should probably keep it that way. That even if I have, you know, an entirely positive experience with not a whole lot to talk about, well that's also worth talking about to make sure that people don't have, you know, a, a, uh, a distorted view of the experience because I decided to skip something because it wasn't interesting enough. Um, so, yeah, I have no idea what to expect. I've gone through the invoice that Tesla sent me, uh, which I, I don't owe them anything for this. They changed the autopilot computer and uh, also took care of some other stuff. Uh, if I remember correctly, they updated the end pins on the charge port or something, some updated part thing. Uh, as I requested, they changed out the uh, battery pack breathers so that hopefully uh, I don't get that loud clunking noise during significant elevation changes or temperature changes. Some of you noticed that clunk in some of my past videos, so, you know, hopefully that won't be a thing anymore. Um, and according to the invoice, they were also messing around with the front latch, so maybe they noticed something wrong with that, like the fact that the front fascia doesn't actually line up with the, uh, the hood properly, but, you know, we'll see. I'm back from the service center, and I have to say, this is probably the best outcome from a Tesla service I've ever had. The car is fine. There's no additional body damage on the outside. The interior wasn't messed up, so there's not like grime or grease prints or anything anywhere on the uh, white interior. Go figure. As far as I could tell during the 60 mile drive back up here from Van Nuys, they didn't introduce any new squeaks or rattles despite having to take apart some of the dash area to do the autopilot computer swap. And speaking of the autopilot computer upgrade, all of my settings and stuff carried over, which is great. According to the people at the service center, that happens about 90% of the time, and about 10% of the time, you just start from defaults. So all good there. Even my vault was preserved. The detail that I mentioned from the invoice about front latch adjustment was just that. They found that it was out of alignment and made some adjustments and there we go. Didn't really have much to do with the hood and the front fascia not really lining up right from the factory, although it might be a tiny bit better. It's hard to tell. Overall, the service appointment went great, and I want to thank the Tesla Van Ice crew for really nailing this one, especially since, you know, there was no appointment. This was very kind of last minute, hey, let us help you out and do this for you because we know that we've, you know, put you through a lot over the years. Uh, and, and yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Though, I'm sure that some of you are wondering, this is a Tesla service appointment. How can it be a Tesla service appointment without something not being quite right? And, okay, fine. There was one thing that wasn't quite right. On the electronic invoice I received after work was completed, I noticed there was a line item for a Model 3 badge. I thought, okay, no big deal. They probably just put a badge on it because this being one of the very early performance cars didn't have any badging on the back at all. It just had the Tesla logo. Except this is the badge they use. Notice something missing? Yeah, that red underline indicating that it's a performance model. I find this pretty amusing, because if you remember from one of my past service videos, my Model S has also been incorrectly badged by either one of their body shops or the service center, or somewhere along there it got badged as a 75D instead of a 70D. The crew offered to complete the badge and put the red underline on there while I was still at the service center, but I declined because, hey, this gives me the opportunity to shoot like a debadging tutorial for you guys or something. Content! The drive home with the Hardware 3 autopilot visualizations was really neat to experience. Apparently the world is full of more than just traffic cones. I'm looking forward to shooting a lot of videos experimenting with Hardware 3. I've got some ideas. Anyway, that's about it for this video. If you have an older Model 3 or Model S or Model X eligible for the Hardware 3 computer upgrade, have you had it done? And if so, how did that process go for you? In my case, my car was ready to pick up the day after I dropped it off, which, I mean, that's pretty cool. Let me know in the comments below how things went for you, and as always, I'll see you later.
Okay.